April 14th, I don't remember if I announced this in this class previously, but I'll announce it again. Uh, I require this for all of my classes, even though our class will be done. So it's not required for you, but I would strongly, 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 strongly encourage you uh, to get involved with this. So on April 14th from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. here in the department, um, we're having a hackathon uh, where we're going to have, um, uh, to sign up for it, you email uh, Professor Josh Locklear, uh, joshua.locklear at cuw.edu, and uh, tell them that you will be there and you choose whether or not you want to be involved with a project that's doing either virtual reality or augmented reality or a mobile application, like an Android or an iPhone type thing. Um, so what we do for this programming competition is we create groups. So what I would do is, as most of us in here are beginning programmers, I would put you in groups with more advanced programmers so that you get kind of a full application experience. You, you, know, you basically write an entire uh, program, either a mobile app or a virtual reality thing, in 12 hours. Um, so you know, if you think you, know, don't, you can't code worth anything, that's okay. There's going to be other people there just like that. All right, so I strongly encourage you to take advantage of this. It's a great way to learn uh, probably more in 12 hours than you would learn in an entire course, given how you know fast we have to go through things. So you're kind of just throwing real-world stuff. Uh, so strongly encourage you to take advantage of that when you uh, email. Uh, Josh Locklear just mentioned in there that you're one of my 535 students, um, and he'll let you into it because it's for undergraduates only, but I want to all the programming grad students I want to get involved as well. So strongly encourage you to take advantage of it. Even if you're not going to move on to 537, uh, this would give you that one more little step of uh, real world uh, experience that maybe gives you a little bit more stuff to do when you go out into the workforce or something. Uh, the other benefit is you get free breakfast, free lunch, free dinner. So if you like free food, and this, <laughs> and this is on a Saturday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. All right, everybody have the information written down? Okay. Strongly encourage you to take advantage of it. I hope to see um, most of you there, regardless of what you perceive your skill level is, because there will be other people who are complete beginners there. All right. Okay. Now. So we started writing this thing uh, last time where we had some rooms and exits between rooms. Let me get this guy open here. All right, so there's our monster. All right, so you were supposed to write so I gave you this as a starting point. We have a person, we have a dungeon, we enter the dungeon. Um, what does dungeon do? Dungeon creates some rooms, it creates some exits in those rooms. Um, oh, we had, those are our monsters, Jade and Promise. Makes sense. Uh, they're both in room uh, one. We'll set our starting room. Okay, so what are we supposed to do for the homework? You should have an attack command that lets you an attack a monster that's in there, um, as well as check to see if uh, whatever they enter in is one of the exits. Then we should take the exit. So that's the thing. We should be able to kill monsters, and we should be able to move around in our map. Sound sound right? Okay. I have a question. What if what if they leave the game? Well, exit. yeah, exit the game or just restart or give the player enough hit points where they never lose. For this little thing, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't matter if the player gets killed when he attacks something. It's just over. You know, you're dead. Skull and crossbones, whatever. Okay, so let's see what this thing looks like initially. So we have our person, and we have our dungeon, and we add the person to the dungeon. And when we say enter room, uh, 
Uh, we're setting the starting room of the dungeon, we're adding the person to it, and then we're saying person.start. So that's going to be in our person guy up here. So here's start. It shows the current room, and then it gives us a prompt. So it's going to print out command followed by the little thing. We'll read something in. Uh, if the command is equal to quit, we'll leave. Otherwise, we're going to process that command, and that's going to take us here. We already have the command set up for look, where just whatever room we're currently in, it displays it again. Uh, we should be able to do an attack. Uh, let me look at current room display. Are we showing monsters already? Room display. There's a description. Here's other players. Here's the monster. So we should see... Uh, uh, Jade and Promise in the room there. All right, so let's go ahead and let's run this guy. Make sure we're where we think we are. Um, this is called CSC 535 Process Expression. That's just the program we had it in. So Python 3 must be in downloads. Oh, so I didn't because I gave you starting point for here. We don't have anything in our else's. All right, so just for a second then. Let me just get rid of that piece right there. All right, so here's our room one. Uh, there's a description, other players. Here's our couple of monsters, Jaday and Promise. Possible exits are east and south. If I type in look, it's gonna look around again. I should be able to type in attack followed by uh, like Jade, and that should start a fight between me and him. But right now it says command not found. All right, so I need to be able to respond uh, to that. So we'll go ahead and we'll put this guy back in. And what I'll do for right now is we'll just say starting to attack. All right, and then I'll just say attack here. So there's our starting to attack. So we're getting into the right, um, the right portion of our process command. All right, so we decided for them to fight, they need to go back and forth doing some amount of damage to each other. And we kind of set this up last time, right? So go ahead and quit. So a person uh, has some number of hit points. They can generate damage. They can also take damage, and we're going to go back and forth um, as we uh, as we fight. Now, what I might do here um, to, you know, I think maybe make things a little bit uh, easier is I'm going to create another class here. So I'm going to create a class called Fight. All right, and the Fight class is going to have the two. Um, things that are fighting. So in our case, we're going to have a monster and we're going to have a person. Those are the two things that can fight in our little world for right now. Um, if we were going a little bit farther into the object-oriented model, we might say that everything's a person and monsters are kind of specialized persons, but we know it's always going to be a player, a person fighting against the monster, so we'll just leave it at that. So we'll do def underscore underscore init self and there's the person, there's the monster, self.person is equal to person, self.monster is equal to monster. All right, so that will be our um, constructor for our fight. Then we'll go ahead and have a function <coughs> called start. that will have these guys fight against each other until somebody dies. All right, so that's what uh, fight will do. 
Um, so we're having person fight against monster. We could either roll the dice and figure out who gets to go first, or we could say that the person always attacks first. That kind of makes sense in our sense. It's the person who's choosing to attack. You know, like if I walk up and I just you know blindly decide to attack Janae, I'm probably going to land the first blow. It might be over quickly after that, but I'm going to land that first blow. I would like you got the ninja moves because I'm not very fast. <laughs> You're quick. I am not at all. More lumbering. I mean, even to get out of the chair and possibly think about attacking is going to be a really low priority for me. <laughs> so for simplicity's sake, we'll go ahead and let the person go first. So um, we'll go ahead and say, uh, well, for right now, I'm just going to say, while true, I'll change this here in a few minutes. We're going to have the person generate some damage and uh, do that damage against the monster. So we'll say monster. Uh, let's see. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Offense is going to be person. Defense. Is that how you spell defense? Defense is equal to monster initially. Okay. So we'll go ahead and say while. Well, we'll say while true for right now. So we'll say defense dot take damage. Offense dot generate damage. All right, so whoever's offense starting off, that's the person. They will generate some damage. We'll send that into the defense to take that damage. And then we're going to check to see if they are dead. If defense dot is dead. Then we'll say defense dot name. Oh, we're going to print this. Has died. And then we'll break out of our loop. Else, we didn't even need the else for this, but I'll put it in here just for structure's sake. We're going to go ahead and say temp is equal to defense. Defense is equal to offense. Offense is equal to temp. So flip-flop the who's attacking and who's uh, being attacked. All right. So we will create a fight between the person and the monster. We'll set those two things. We'll tell at the start. The person becomes the original offense. The monster becomes the original defense. We're just going to say while true here, the defense is going to take some damage. How much damage? However much damage offense generates. Then we'll ask if defense is dead, we'll print out this person's name has died. And then we'll break out of this while loop so the fight will be over. Otherwise, we'll flip-flop offense and defense. So we have a different person attacking and a different person defending the next time through this loop. Okay. So we come back down here into process command and we have a command. Um, but let's see what I say to do for this one. Let's see. Ask which monster to attack. So we need to prompt them a second time for who to attack, right? Okay. Um, so we could even give them a little menu if we want, like press one for, um, you know, the first monster, press two for the second monster or something like that, or we can have them type in the monster's name. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll say, we'll do a print. Who would you like to attack? A 
I'm going to start a count off at zero. Actually, we can do uh, an I here because our room, where's my room? A room has a list of monsters that has a length associated with it. So I'm going to say for I in range from zero to length of uh, self dot, what's it called, current room? Current room? Dot get, uh, no, dot list of monsters. So we'll say I is in range of zero to the length of the list of monsters for the room that the player is currently in. And then we're going to print out So we're going to say the string version of I followed by, I need to do like a colon like that, followed by self dot cur room dot list of monsters at bucket I. All right, something like that that should say Zero, Jade, one, promise, something like that. Uh, and actually the monster that's in there, that's an actual monster thing. So I need to get that monster's name. So not just the monster itself, but the monster's name. All right, so let's do a quick attack and just make sure it shows us the list of people that we're supposed to be attacking. And then we'll actually make the attack happen. All right, who would you like to attack? Zero for Jade, one for Promise. All right, so now we need to read in. It's taking us back to the command prompt, so that's not really where we want to be yet. But now we're going to read in our choice. Choice is, ooh, is equal to input, um, and that's going to be a number that we're going to give ourselves. So we'll just get the integer version of input. And we can assume they're going to give us a legal input, either a zero or a one in this case. All right. So after we have that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a, um, uh, a fight. So we're going to say fight is equal to um, fight. So just like we created our objects down here, we're going to create a fight and our fight takes in the person as well as the, um, the monster we're fighting. Okay, so now all this is happening inside of our person object. So which person is fighting here? We know that the monster we're fighting against is going to be that guy. That's the monster we've selected. Okay, except it's going to be choice, not I. So that's the monster we've selected. But who's the person that's fighting? <laughs> self. Exactly. So self is how an object refers to itself from within itself. Really, really, really important. So it is this particular person. The person who is this instance of person. That's going to be fighting against this monster. All right, so there's our fight, and we wrote inside a fight, what I call it, start, start, which starts the fight. All right, so we'll go ahead and say fight.start. Um, now, just so we get a little feedback, we might want to go ahead and print out, like each time through, the current health of the offense and defense person, you know, some information about them. Uh, let's see. So we'll tell each one to display themselves. So inside of our fight, we'll go ahead and say offense.display, defense.display. All right, so we should see the fight as it progresses.
All right, so if they type in attack, we'll ask them, who do you want to attack? We'll show them our menu. We'll read in. Um, you know, we can give them that little prompt thing again if we want uh, to do something like print. Monster number. And what is it? Like the uh, end is equal to that guy. Yeah. All right. So that'll give us our little prompt. So we'll go run this. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and say attack. There's my uh, choices to attack, and obviously we'll attack Jade. All right, let's see what did this guy like. It was so violent. So, the list of monsters. Should have gotten the correct monster. Do, do, do. This guy takes in self, it takes in a person, it takes in a. Oh! Thank you. I didn't finish my constructor. Almost finished it. All right, there's my attack. All right, what is it mad about this time? Person is not defined. Self dot person. Self dot monster. Monster object has no attribute display. Did we not teach monsters how to display? We did not. So let's steal display from person. Good enough. Ah! Oh. Oh, can't be right. Hold on. Hold, hold on. There. There. Okay. Well, now hold on. This isn't as so. Promise. Keep in mind, I was already mostly dead. All right, when I started this fight, I was down to seven hit points. Yeah. And you had 29. Look how weak you were. You hit me for three to begin with. <laughs> then you missed me. That was really a pathetic fight. <laughs> I mean, I attacked two people in a row. It shouldn't have happened that way, but it's the way it went. All right, so in any case, there's kind of our fight thing. When somebody dies, you maybe want to remove them from the room if you if if you wanted to. If it's the person, say game over. If it's the monster, kick him out of the room so that the next time you hit attack, they don't show up in there. Something like that. Um, okay, so let's say that's good for the attack. And the other thing we're supposed to do is we're supposed to be moving from room to room. So if I type in anything else, if it's one of my exits, then I should try to take that exit. Okay, so let's go back down here. So before I just blanketly say command not found, I'm going to check to see if the command that they gave me is actually one of my exits. Okay, so I'm going to go through all the exits that are in the current room. So I'll say for i in range of zero to self dot cur room dot, what is that, list of exits? And that's gonna be the length of that guy. 
All right, so I'll go through all of that. Um, and then each time through, I'm going to ask the question if, um, what's it called, command? If command is equal to the current exit that I'm looking at. So if command is equivalent to self dot her room dot list of exits at bucket I dot, does an exit have a name? That's a fight. That's a person. That's an exit. Oh, an exit just has the destination. So that destination. So if the command they typed in is equal to an exit's destination, then for right now, let's just do print taking the exit to the command. Just make sure that this is uh, working. All right, so we have to have a way of bailing out of here. So one thing I could do is I can just say return none, and that'll make this function immediately end, um, going back to the guy who previously called it, so that the only way I can get here is if it wasn't an exit, it would say command not found. All right, so let's run this guy. All right, so I'll go ahead and type in east. Doesn't it like list of exits dot destination? Can I compare strings in Python three with double equal sign, or I have to say dot equals? Test something here real quick. Okay, so it doesn't like Well, the exit's an actual object. I do have my exits inside my list of exits, do I not? Let's look at our room. How do I print out the dudes in my room? Display possible exits for exit name in self dot list of exits. Ah, is this guy a dictionary? Ah, ha, ha, that's it. Um, so that's the key of that guy. Yeah, when we go through, we get the names of our exits. So we're going to actually say this. We'll just get the key associated with it. So, or we could actually do, if I want to use the same code I have here. Let's say, where's my process command? I'm lost. Dot key. Oh, I can't say bucket I of a dictionary. So here, I need to say this. I need to say for exit in this collection So I could say exit name and I could say exit value because exit value will be the actual exit. Uh, exit name will be the name of the exit. Uh, in self dot cur room dot list of exits and then I'll just print out exit name here to make sure that we're getting the right stuff now. Do, do, 
to do for in Fab Lab. Too many values to unpack. I can have two things, can't I? All right, so those are my two uh, exits, east and south. So each time through, I'm going to ask the question if command is equal to exit name. Then we'll say print taking the exit command, and we'll say return none. All right, so we said east, taking command to the taking the exit to the east. Do look here. Let's type in uh, south, taking exit to the south. Let's just bang on the keyboard. It should say command not found. All right, so now we're correctly identifying that we should be taking an exit. So now how do we actually take the exit? Well, an exit has a room associated with it, does it not? Which is a room. Is it not? Yeah, it's got to be. Da, da, da. Add exit to the north, and here's the exit. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. It, yeah, the exit has a room. This is a room. This is a room. This is a room. So the the value associated with uh, direction is an exit um, that has a destination that is a room. All right, and how do we add stuff to a room? Well, we're going to need to remove ourselves from the current room that we're in. And then we're going to, where's my rooms? So I'll have to add myself. I think we have a function for adding. So we can add a person to a room. Um, we also need to probably be able to remove a person from a room. That way we can remove ourselves from the current room. What does? Takes somebody and puts them in a room. Right, but then that person would actually be in two rooms. Because add person takes in, it's a room. So if I'm a room and I'm adding a person to the room, I'm going to append that uh, guy to my list of persons. That doesn't actually remove him from my previous list of rooms. I'm letting the person know that your new current room is self. But I, I need to get them out of the previous room. Otherwise, looking in that room will show like old shadows of yourself. In fact, you might even see yourself in there a couple of times. All right, so we need to remove ourselves from the list. So just remove. All right, so I'm just going to write in our room here, def remove person, self person, and this guy will say self dot list of persons dot remove persons. So that'll kick them out of the room and then we'll be able to add ourselves to another room. So the room we want to be kicked out of is our current room, and then we want to add ourselves to the destination associated with the exit. Okay, so taking the exit. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to say exit is equal to self dot cur room dot list of exits at bucket command. So that guy will be a uh, an exit. 
Um, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to say um, self.currroom.remove person. And we'll pass ourself in there. So whatever room we're currently in, I want that room to remove me from the list. Then I'm going to say exit. Uh, let's see. Exit dot destination dot add person self, which should set me into that room. That should be my new uh, cur room. Just make sure that that does that add person. Yeah, sets that person's cur room to self. Okay. Uh, then if I want, it might be nice then to also go ahead and have the current room display itself just to see that I'm in a new room now. So I'll say self.currroom.display like that. So if I've determined there's an exit I need to take, I'll go ahead and spit out I'm taking the exit, although I don't need to really do that. That was just for testing. So I will grab the exit from the dictionary. That's the exit object associated with the key that is the exit direction. I will go ahead and remove myself from my current room. I will add myself to the room associated with the exit. And then I'll ask my new current room, which should have been updated from this guy, to display itself so I see it on the screen. All right. So... Right now, I see Jade and Promise in here. I'll go ahead and go to the east. Notice now I don't see those monsters in there, and I have uh, um, an exit to the west and an exit to the southwest. If I go back to the west, now I see Jade and Promise again. If I go to the east, then I go to the southwest, then I go to the north, now I see Jade and Promise again. So now I can move through my dungeon. All right, so... Anything else we had to do for the homework? All right, so not too bad. A lot of that was getting used to manipulating uh, objects. Make sense? So when we look at this to take an exit, I know most of you maybe spent a lot of time on this taking the exit thing, but when you see the solution here, not a whole lot of stuff to get us to go from one room to another. We just had to get used to this idea of getting an object, doing something with that object, doing something else with that object, so on and so forth. So using objects to get the job done. So let me copy all this. I'll paste it into Slack. Okay, so any last minute questions or anything you want me to review before we do the exam? Or you just want to get it over, <laughs> get it over with? <laughs> You're not excited? You're tired. All right, so let me...